What's up guys? So today we're back with another video about the donor switchboard. We've been doing some trace repair on the board itself and some reballing of some chips so far. Uh, and the next steps are going to be to repair, reball, and replace the APU. So we've got the original APU for the console here. You actually can't like replace this with a new one. You do need to use the one that is unique to this console as it is paired with the NAND and the security chip here on the board. So this is a motherboard that bent and a lot of the pads on the board and on the actual chip itself in this corner got ripped off and the console stopped booting and would show a kernel panic. So in our last video on this board, we repaired the BGA pads on the board itself. And in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how I went about repairing the pads on the actual chip itself. So I actually already did go ahead and repair the pads on this APU like a while back before I even started this video series. And this was just sort of a fun challenge I did for myself, but I did take footage while I was doing it. So we'll go and take a look at that footage. This was actually before I even started my YouTube channel. So let's go visit past Zach and take a look at how we repaired the pads on this APU. So let's go down here, zoom in all the way. Can I get like a flashlight in here just to make this visible? What about like a UV light? Okay, so I think I think on this one here, it's on the top right is where I need to scrape here in order to uh, tan and solder a new pad. So that's gonna be right here. And I'm using both hands for this one tool, by the way, just to be as steady as I can be. Unfortunately, I think I went too, too far maybe. Yeah, I think that stuff on the right is not what we're looking for. Damn, dude, it's so small. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I scraped on the outside of it. Let me just scrape the rest of what I think we need, which is here. Yeah, I think it's that is what we need. So we're gonna try to UV mask that other side first so it doesn't give us trouble. Okay, so I've covered a lot of these over here in solder mask for a few reasons. I scraped this one a bit too much. So you can see on each one of these, this is actually, I believe, ground. And then this here is where we actually need to solder the replacement pad. So I made the mistake on both this one when I did it and then this one here. You can see the difference between this pad and then the line in between them, curved line there, and then that pad there, which kind of connects to this whole oval here. And if you're not careful, like here, you can kind of scrape through and if you're putting a new pad on, we, we can very easily accidentally short that pad to ground. So all I have to say is I took the pad off that I did here because I believe I shorted that to ground inadvertently. This one, we only want to scrape this part off of. And I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time and keep wiping it off just to make sure we don't scrape too much. And I'm just gonna try to flatten it out a bit here. I'm not trying to scrape into it too much, just trying to flatten it like that. And that seems pretty flat. And now I just want to dig into the corner here as best I can. And it's starting to show itself there a little bit. All right, so I've got this one basically where I want it. So I'm gonna just sort of leave that. Okay, so we have this one basically good to go now. And if I use a multimeter right now and use diode mode, I know for a fact this here is ground. So if I go between here and here, we're getting 0.8 voltage drop. So I know that that's not shorted to ground and we can now use that to solder a new pad. So that's what we're gonna try to do right now. And I think I'm gonna try using one of these because it has a little fin on it, which is perfect for soldering to that kind of thing. And we'll compare the size of it to the other solder pads here. You can see that it's like pretty much the exact same size. It's maybe a little bit bigger, but that's, that's perfect. So first I gotta get one of these off without losing it. And it looks like I managed to get one off and it's over here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of flux. I'll just grab like the tiniest bit of flux on my tweezer here. And everything looks so much smaller when I grab it. Like that looks like the smallest p possible drop, but obviously it's massive compared to this, but we're gonna work with it. So we just need this to go here, but I need the fin to sort of line up with where we're soldering it to, just like that. That would be perfect, right like that. So I'm gonna grab my iron now and tin my iron. I'll go ahead like 375 degrees, just cause this tip is small. Actually, it would have been nice to tin this point first. Okay, well we're gonna do this. We're gonna tin the point. So that's nice and tinned. I'm gonna just clean off a lot of this flux here cause it's sort of getting in the way. All right, and instead, 
we're just going to use a tiny, tiny bit. And I'll grab some with one side of my tweezer and we'll pop it down here. Move this into place just like that. Hopefully get a bit of a more focused view on this. Okay. And I'm going to do my best to hold this in place while I solder it. Cool. I think that did it. We can double check with the multimeter and double check that we get a voltage drop reading, diode mode reading to, to ground. And yes, we are getting a reading on it, which is great. That means we're making a solid connection there. So what I'm going to do now is try to gently clean the area up from all the flux because we need to add a bit more solder mask to keep that thing from going anywhere. So I'm just going to do this. That's looking beautiful. Time to add some solder mask. It's a nice amount there. Just want to make sure it gets all around, especially all around the pad so it can kind of adhere to the board a little. That's great. So let's cure that. I'll do two minutes and we'll be right back. Okay. And now we will just wipe this off with some alcohol here. Great. So now we should be able to gently scrape this. Ideally, we don't scrape all of it off and just sort of the center and where we need the ball to stick. Get in there, and I think that should be good. I don't particularly want to uncover too much more than that, uh, and I think that's plenty just like that to have a solder ball on it. We can test it one more time with the multimeter. Yeah, good. Cool, that looks real good. So I'll leave that one, and we're gonna move on to the next one. <laughs> so I think these other ones aren't gonna be like quite as annoying because I had already scraped through on both of these two a little bit too much. So this one might be a little bit annoying as well, but I've already got the solder mask on it. So I just need to scrape here. So that should be plenty right there. I'm pretty happy with the solder on that. So I'm not going to go too crazy with turning that anymore. I'm going to grab one of these pads that one seemed to work perfectly. So I'm going to use the same, same kind here. Let's just grab this one here. Come on. All right. So we're going to get this guy in place. Perfect. And some flux that might be too much. Okay. All right. So hold this guy in place and get him soldered down. And I think that is perfect. Now we're gonna cover this in some solder mask. Trying not to disturb it too much while I'm putting mask on it. Shit, I think it just came off. So we gotta start again. Rip. And we can line this thing up. Great. All right, I think that's soldered. And I'll clean it off before we, more solder mask. Solder mask. Trying not to ruin it this time. Let's cure that. All right. Let's see how we're doing. Nice and cured. So let's get to scraping away at it. So that should be enough to get a solder ball on there, which is great. And I'll just double check with the multimeter that that is not shorting to ground at all. We'll go between known ground, which is this, and our point, which is this. Yep, 0.5 voltage drop, so that's perfect. All right, so moving on. These other ones, I believe, let me just look at my notes. So we've taken care of column 11, two from the bottom, which is this guy here. We've taken care of column seven through nine by just covering them because they're not going anywhere we need to worry about. Column number six, two up from the bottom we just did. So we need to do all of the rest of these from columns one through five. So it's definitely going to be a lot to do, but it'll be good practice for me. So I'm obviously not going to talk my way through the entirety of this process. It'll be at least a fun process to try and get this reballed. So I think what I'll do is I'll go through and very carefully scrape the parts of these that I need like this. This is perfect. So I'm going to leave this how it is and we'll move on to the next one. So I'll just sort of do a, a time lapse of, of me doing this. Hopefully it'll get faster as I go. So far, we have all of these exposed. I'm going to go back through a couple of them and just clean up. I looked through them just now, and I think on one of them, at least this one here, I'm going to be putting more mask here. You can see there's a little bit of an exposed 
copper there, which is actually not the point we're looking for. So I got to make sure that's covered. And you can see on some of these, I'm realizing all of these ones that have like an outline that's cracked are weakened. So like this one too here is weakened. All of the ones that are essentially cracked but didn't fully fall off, just sort of weakened pads like this one here. So I have to be relatively gentle around this area because I don't want to have to be replacing more pads than I need to be. But yeah, you can see how much stress was on that corner of the board compared to, you know, up here where we don't see any of that. And it's even possible with, you know, ones like this here that the crack here severed the connection. We can check this one actually just to just to see. So we have this and this that's still making a connection. What about this one here? That is also still making a connection. So we're good there. And we can go around and kind of check all of the ones we scraped away as well to see if those are the correct points. So far, I'm getting a reading on all of these. Yeah, all of those are giving me a reading. So I'm going to quit talking and get going on tinning up all of these. And then we'll move on to putting pads on. All right, so I've gotten this to the point where I can finally add some UV mask all over them. Okay, I had the recording pause, but I essentially just scraped the coating off of these. And I'm going through and doing readings on each of them against ground here. And they're all giving me a good reading except for this one here, which is giving me a ground. So either this is shorted to ground underneath or it actually is ground and is supposed to be ground. So I'm going to test that point instead of the surrounding area against ground. And we're going to see if that actually is ground there or if we're supposed to have a better reading. Hmm. Still just getting ground. And I don't know if that's because the point here is shorting to ground or what. So I'm going to dig this out a little bit deeper carefully and maybe try to sever the connection there between the, there's no way I'm getting a braid in here. This is just too small. So I'm better off digging. Okay. Well, we're going to test that again. Okay. And we do have a reading now. So that was shorted to ground. So I'm really glad I dug that up because you could actually see it. The solder was connected to this other area right above it here, which is ground here. So this here is not what we want to solder to, but this is. Let's measure one more time with the solder on it. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we're all set this time. And I gotta be really gentle while measuring this so I don't knock it off. Yes, okay, perfect. We're getting a good reading now, so I can go ahead and gently clean the area. Solder mask, god damn it. All right, what a joke. What a joke. I have some flux. I don't even need more solder on there. Just need this thing to fucking stay where I put it. Come on, I almost took that stupid thing off again. All right, we're gonna harden the mask. We're gonna scrape this now. All right, one more test here. Double check this thing is no longer shorting. That would be incredible. Yep, we're good. All right, good stuff, good stuff. So all of these points are properly soldered. Let me just get this garbage off of here. And I think we had some pad. Oh yeah, this one here that just has a bit of mask on it that I want to remove. I could just double check for any others, but I think we are all set. Wow. So uh, not the prettiest looking thing, but certainly better than no pads, yeah? So we've gone ahead and repaired every single one of those that matter. The rest of them that are covered are no connects, which are these guys here. Otherwise, this thing is looking pretty nice. Wow, what a process. So future Zach back here, we've got the APU repaired. I'll take a look under the microscope here and show you the final result. This thing's definitely not pretty, but we did manage to get those pads connected to their respective traces. If I zoom a little bit up like this, the actual thickness of the repaired pads is really not too bad. This is great because we don't want the solder mask to get in the way of any of the solder balls that need to make a connection between the APU and the board. If we wanted to, we probably could grind a little bit more of that off, but I'm pretty happy with how flat that is on the board. And I'd rather not risk the integrity of any of these pads to grind it anymore. So I'm pretty happy with this. And we can go ahead and get this APU reballed and installed in another video. So I hope that was an interesting video, pretty short one today. I look forward to getting this installed back into the console uh, to see if it gets things working. So I appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.